Some copyrighted aesthetic music. What does aesthetic mean? Pleasing. Pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing. But, uh, you know, I've always heard it in terms of, uh, you know, like furniture and stuff like that, or room settings. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I forgot to check that um, company thing again. She forgot to check something, so I guess she's... Hold on. Just it. stay live. Okay. I mean, don't like... Just stay there. I don't think anyone's watching the pub yet. Not quite. Oh, wait. No, wait. That was you. Ha, ha, ha. William Sonoma. William Did Sonoma. they... Oh, Sir Latav was the one that closed. I don't think William Sonoma... Did William Sonoma close? I'm pretty sure they're still open. I haven't heard anything about them. Lately. But then again, there's like a huge list. This card may be used by making purchases at any stores in the United States or online by William Sonoma, Pottery Barn, uh, Pottery Barn Kids, PB you like Teen. Pottery Barn, right? Yeah, I mean, at least it, I'll use it. I'm excited. Hey, Mom! Hello. Okay. Right. Let me get out the Jim Jim of Bob Stop. So, today what we have on the menu, cocktail menu, is pumpkin spice cocktail with ginger vodka that Chelsea made. Chelsea made the ginger vodka. How? I don't know. I'll show you how. Yeah. Woohoo! Okay, so it's basically just fresh ginger with vodka. Oh, okay. And I infused it on Monday and I kept it in the fridge. I'm worried it's gonna be like spicy. The ginger, raw ginger spicy. Yeah. Did it say, I mean, like, is that a whole, whole thing? It's a couple, let me see. Ooh, I don't really wanna just take. <laughs> it's vodka. Okay. It's not spicy. Okay. It'll be good. So, um, hi, Chelsea and Stuart. Hey, uh, Debbie. I'm pretty sure that's Debbie. Yes, hi. They're in Virginia, so you guys are going to be cooking Ooh, along nice. tonight. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hold on. If you haven't baked your potato yet, do it now. So, I'm actually just going to put it in the microwave. So, I did message a few people and told them to bake their potato beforehand because you need a cooked, cool potato. So um, we are going to do that now. Just in case anyone didn't get the memo about having the potato cooked beforehand, pop it in your microwave, stab it a few times so it doesn't blow up in your microwave, let the steam out, and microwave it now, and then you're going to put it in the fridge to cool because you need to be able to handle it. So, Oh, cool. There's not a big... <laughs> One to four, potato, one. Oh my gosh, there's a baked potato button on the microwave. I've never actually microwaved a baked potato. I usually bake them in the oven, but I wanted to make sure that I could tell people how to do it. So if you haven't baked your potato yet, do it now and do it in the microwave so it's cooked. Okay, how long do you microwave it for? Um, I am going to microwave the potato for five minutes and then I'll check it. So actually on our microwave, there was like a potato button and I put potato, and then it said how many potatoes, and I said one, and then it said five minutes. So I would start with five minutes and then check it. Your potato should be, if you're cooking for two to four people, it should be like about a three to four inch potato. Yes, if you're going to cook for more people, use two potatoes. I do have a fancy button. <laughs> fancy button. Okay, so we are going to make this drink. Okay, babe, will you... Please, do the honors. What am I doing? Of opening up the can of uh, pumpkin puree. I'm excited for this pumpkin gnocchi. Uh, the recipe looked really good. I've made pumpkin gnocchi in the past, and it was a lot more, like, simple. Like, it didn't have the semolina flour. It didn't have the parmesan. And I think this gnocchi is going to be um, not as, like, doughy, which is a good thing. Not, like, as floury. That's why I chose this recipe. Um, but I've definitely made pumpkin gnocchi in the past, but this one was a little bit different, and I think it's going to be delicious. So I'm well excited. Potato button. Yes. Okay. And then will you grab the ice for us? 
Okay, so I did put on the Twitch and on my Facebook and Instagram what the cocktail is. Oh, thank you. I actually have more sourdough bread. Someone said, our, my mom said our bread looked amazing today. I have more sourdough bread in, good too. Yes, in right. the fridge right now as we speak that will get baked tomorrow. And I started it at 6 a.m. this morning because sourdough takes forever. Okay. So we're going to make a pumpkin spice cocktail. So we are going to use our cocktail shaker. And since we're going to drain the whole thing, I'll just add... I already weighed this out on Monday. This is uh, four, ounces. four ounces of vodka that I infused with fresh ginger. And then we are going to add a half an ounce of lime, which should be about half a, half of a lime. Let's see. We need a whole ounce. This is a big lime. Let me use the... It's, it was a really juicy lime. It is semolina flour. If you don't have semolina flour, you can use uh, all-purpose flour. Semolina flour is um, more of a coarse flour, and I believe it's from Durham wheat, which is just like a different type of um, flour. But uh, you could use all-purpose flour. Totally fine. I think that the semolina flour is just going to add a little bit of texture. Um, but if you don't have it, don't worry. Uh, it was almost an ounce. So, wait, let me see. Oh, it's exactly an ounce. Oh, Man, that was a juicy lime. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to add one ounce of fresh lime juice to our shaker. Oh. And then we need um, one ounce of pumpkin puree, which will be two ounces. Oh, yes, wow. if you don't have semolina flour, don't worry. <laughs> And if you haven't cooked your potato yet, please do it now. Ours is in the microwave. Put one, put two ounces of, that does not sound good. Yeah. I've never microwaved a potato. It sounds crazy. Let's... No, no, leave it, leave it. You think so? Yeah, yeah I know so. Oh, you've microwaved a potato before? No, but I have seen somebody open a microwave early and then it popped in their face. Oh. You don't want that. So you're just going to let it cool in there? Yeah. Okay, well, we have to eventually put it in the fridge because it needs to cool quicker than that. Yeah. May I please have the honey? The honey. There you go. Okay, so now we are going to add a splash of honey. So one splash, two splashes. And shake vigorously. Yeah, I feel like this is not a lot of... Oh, I need ice. I feel like this is not a lot of... Um, like, it's going to be a very strong drink because it's mostly vodka. Which I guess is okay, but... Okay. <laughs> cool stew chef. Cool stew chef. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Shake vigorously. Oh, that'd be bad. These are, nice These are cool glasses, right? I thought they would look great with our pumpkin cocktail, which I looked up because I was like, what goes good with... A pumpkin gnocchi, and then it's a pumpkin cocktail. So here we go. So you guys can see here we've got our glasses, and now we are going to strain over. So this was ginger vodka, pumpkin puree, honey, and lime. Here we go. Ooh, it's pretty. Ooh. That is gorgeous. We should take a picture yeah. before we drink it. And I'm pretty sure there's more left, but we'll leave that to the side. Okay, we need to take a photo. Look, that's really pretty. Do you guys see how gorgeous this color, color is? Let me see. Oh, it's really pretty. Okay. Sarah will take the photos because I got my Twitch thing on. 
That looks good. What a pretty cocktail. Okay. I'm excited to try it. Let's see if it's any good. Cheers. Cheers. Pumpkin ginger vodka. I'm a little nervous. Mm, it needs to be sweeter. Though. Yeah, a little sweeter. But it's still good. You like it? Do you want me to shake it back with a little bit more honey? Yes. So the pumpkin puree has no sugar, so it's, it's a little... Bland. Yeah. But it, I, don't, I actually like it. But it tastes like vodka. <laughs> I can taste the vodka. Maybe we'll add a little bit more pumpkin puree and honey. But it was an interesting recipe. It's really pretty. Okay. Always get fresh ice. Yeah. All right, we'll try it. Round two. We'll do... Maybe my splashes of syrup are really... <laughs> Interesting though, I've never made a drink with pumpkin puree, but when in Rome. Okay, let's see. Round two. Probably don't need that much ice. Probably not. And you could do mine like. Not as much? Yeah, because I'm going to drink it. Just, you know, I don't want it to... Uh... He doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't want all the ice to melt it. You know, it takes water. Sure. <laughs> sure. Whatever you say, baby. I love I love it. Okay. Can you check on our, our potato? Uh, potato? Did it ruin it? Yeah. Oh no, that's not our plate. Whose plate is it? Well, well she, she said it's not a big deal, like, because it's been over a year. That's what the noise was? The potato? The potato is fine. The potato is just Oh, okay. Is yeah. it soft? No. No. Okay, we need to put it back in there. No, put it, just, just don't in put the it on a plate. I don't want to put on the towel. We're having potato problems. Well. It was way too hard. I hope you guys baked your potato before. I was thinking about it. I was like, maybe I'll bake it before, and then I'll show people, but it's going to be perfectly fine. All right, try try the, the new okay. sweeter Cheers. drink. Mmm. That's yeah. much better. That's good. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the texture? Yeah, it's so it's pretty thick. It's like um, kind of like a pulpy OJ. Like that texture. mango drink that I like. Uh, -huh. uh it's thick like that. I actually like it. It's different. It's not like I'm gonna drink it every day, but I I like trying something new. Hey, it's uh, October, so it's perfect. It's really pretty. I like the color. It's a gorgeous color. Our dog is being so good right now. She's just like... I should put a camera on her. Just You guys could watch us cooking and then you can watch our dog star. You know, some people on Twitch have that. They have really? like pet cameras. Yeah, like uh, this one girl, I watched her make pizza. So she had three cameras. One on her, one on the food, and one on her dog. Straight up. And there's also someone on Twitch who just has a video of her plants 24-7. And people watch it. And it's just a plant. It's like, it's, it's, to each their own. Stuart? Maybe it's a special plant. I don't think so. It's like what? Like a Venus flytrap? I don't yeah. think it was that. That would be kind of cool. I'd watch that sometimes. Not all Rare. So Stuart now is going live on Twitch with his woodworking. So if you're interested in that, you can watch your voice do one. But we'll, I'll put it in the comments. Wrap it up in a towel that is a little bit more moist. That works. Chelsea, you're good with drinking one drink, then say I'm good. I actually kind of like it. So, so, so moist in the towel? I'm having, thank you for the advice. 
<laughs> well, feel it first. See if it's soft. Right. With the towel. Oh, yeah. It is? You need it done? Let me see. Yeah. Uh, it's still hard oh, yeah. on one side. Okay. Well, oh. throw it back in there. I've never microwaved a potato. Well, we should have did it already. I should have practiced before. Yeah. No, I think that's done. You're right. I think it's done. The knife goes through it really quickly. Okay, we need to put this in the fridge and let it cool down. So if you haven't cooked your potato yet, do so now. And I'm pretty sure our potato is fine. I poked it with a knife and it was perfectly fine. Yeah. I've never, I've never microwaved a potato. You know, now you learn something have, new. How do you feel? Every day. That I'd rather bake it, but it takes an hour. And I wanted to just make sure I covered all the bases because I don't think I messaged everyone um, to microwave or to cook your potatoes before six o'clock. So if you're now logging on, bake your potato now. And you could do it in the microwave for about five minutes, but poke it first so it doesn't blow up. But yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. What else should we talk about? Um, talk about Halloween's coming up. Mm -hmm. Anybody have costumes yet? We have our costumes. Ooh, I could give them a sneak peek. Uh, maybe. Uh, but we're talking about the twenty second. Yes. Of this month. So which is next Thursday? Next Thursday, uh, because the following Thursday we won't. We won't be able to go live the Thursday before Halloween. But next Thursday, we're thinking about wearing our costumes while we're cooking. What do you guys think? Would you like to see our costumes and us cooking them? Yeah. We'll see if someone responds. <sighs> Let's see. What else is on the agenda? Saturday? Mm. What's going on Saturday? Saturday, we are going to be at um, a farmer's market with our grazing um, boards. Stuart's going to be selling his wood cutting boards. I will be selling charcuterie bouquets, which will basically be charcuterie in a cup wrapped up real cute in either a, a wine glass or a um, glass mug. So uh, it's going to be yeah. off Westheimer um, next to Highland Village um, from 10 to three o'clock on Thursday in Houston, Texas, and it looks very kid friendly. They're gonna have a pumpkin patch. There's 64 vendors, so should be good. Did we have any more? Uh... Any more comments? Are you gonna have your bread? Oh, I'm not gonna be selling my bread this Saturday. So I'm. I don't know yet how I could put a price tag on sourdough bread. It is extremely time consuming to make. Um, and what I think I'm gonna do is if like people order a private dinner or like we're gonna be doing Thanksgiving dinners, I plan to give um, people who order a Thanksgiving dinner a loaf of sourdough bread that looks like a pumpkin because you can like put string around it and it will like bake into a pumpkin. So um, I think that's what I'm going to practice in the morning because I want to practice the pumpkin uh, loaf. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I would sell pumpkin bread. It's not something I can mass produce and it is super time consuming and it could fail like easily. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm super into it. Like, how excited was I last night when... Super excited. Oh, my God. When I got that oven spring and, like, the ear and... Oh, I was so happy! You don't know what it's going to look like until you take it out of the oven. So, yeah. I was so happy, you guys. Okay. Um, we'll be fine. I mean, we have... I mean, they're talking about helping us uh, this weekend. We'll be... I think we'll be good. Um, we're not going to have a ton of product to sell. It's more, uh, we want to talk about our business to people yeah. and because uh, it's really difficult to gauge how much. So we're going to make 14 of the charcuterie bouquets mm -hmm. and that may be something that we're, that is going to be something that we're going to start selling on our website with like a minimum of 10 orders. 
Um, but they're like real cute and they're very COVID friendly because they're all wrapped up individually. And, um, but no, I mean, I feel like the farmer's market's going to be really cool. It seems super kid friendly. Um, it's outside, which is good. Of course, masks are required the same, um, stipulations, but I feel like, uh, people feel a little bit more comfortable in an outdoor setting, which is nice. The weather's supposed to be really cool. Yeah, that's so, what I was just going to bring up. I think the weather should be perfect. Who did my sleeve? Uh, my tattoo sleeve was by a gentleman named Chris here in Houston, Texas at Texas Body Art Supply. It's real pretty. Ooh, it looks real pretty on camera. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, there's a corn. I got some avocados up here. It's a tomato. It's an eggplant. Ooh, yeah. I heard a choke. Yeah, I love, I love my sleeve. Stuart was the one who, like, encouraged me to get it. I know some people are like, oh, my God, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, I mean, I'm a chef, and it fits my image. I had an outfit on earlier, and it, did, it wasn't me. It was not Chelsea attire. I had to change. Okay. The address, um, it's going to be on my Instagram. So follow my Instagram, Cooking for Stu. And I have a flyer and all the information for the farmer's market this Saturday on our Instagram. Oh, okay. So I got my tattoo at Texas Body Art Supply off of Jones Road by a gentleman named Chris. If you follow me on Instagram and message me, I will tell you exactly who he is and I can send you his Instagram. But it's spelled kind of weird. It's like S H I Z. You just message me on Instagram, cooking for stew, and I will give you his information. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're about seven minutes away from cooking. Let's set this up a little bit. Let's do our little uh, uh, dish station and get the other board out. We're just going to take five minutes to uh, prep, well, more like two minutes. But I like to have a I call it a dish pit, but it's basically just hot water uh, with some soap. So when we're done cooking, uh, we could put it in there. So it's a lot easier for me to clean. Um, that's how they do it in the kitchens. I wish, I really want a three compartment sink. Um, whenever we move, we're hoping we can build a lot of the stuff um, out. And I want like a three compartment sink for our kitchen sink, which is just like a massive industrial sink. But I think it would look kind of cool. And uh, and then Stuart could build a giant board that could go over it. Yeah. I made her a bath caddy. It came out really nice. Super nice. Um, let's see. Oh, am I going to need a, a trash bowl? Oh, cool. So Yes, thank you for... I, I just got your Facebook message, Robert. And I will... After this session, I will let you know exactly who is my tattoo artist. Trash, trash bowl. bowl. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's one right there. There's a bowl right there, and I put trash in it. All right. I hope you guys have your potato baked, and we will start soon. I'm pretty excited about it. Let me go over. Oh, my, my sister's watching. Hi, Hi Connie. Connie. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you, some of you guys are cooking along tonight. I think this is going to be a very delicious dish. And I'm just going to talk about um, what you need. So we need about one and a half to two cups of riced potato. If you don't know what a ricer is, Stuart is going to show you right now. So this is a ricer. And it's amazing and it makes the best mashed potatoes in the history of the planet Earth. If you do not have one tonight, you could use a cheese grater and we could grate the potato on the smallest uh, little grater that they have. And uh, if you are really into mashing potatoes, mashed potatoes, you should get one of these. They're real, real, real yummy. Is okay. the only, have you only done uh, potatoes in here? Have you done anything else? I think I've like mashed carrots, like yeah. for a carrot puree. But anything that you want to boil down and then turn into like a puree, because you don't want to put um, things that have a lot of starch in a blender or food processor because it will pro make it gummy. So if you put like potatoes in a food processor, 
Ew. Ew. The texture would be super gummy because it's starchy. So you're building up those starches and it becomes like elasticity. Yeah. Really gross. Um, you want to do a size experiment? Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. What else? Oh, someone said they're making chili dogs. Ooh. And they use a potato masher. Good job. Okay. And chili dogs actually sound good. And I totally understand. Uh, kids probably are like, oh, fucking yucky. Yay. Okay. So we're going to need one and a half to two cups of rice potato, one cup of pumpkin puree, which we already opened because we used it in our cocktail, um, one and a half to three cups of semolina flour or all-purpose flour. If you do not have semolina flour, which is just a, um, like, Durham wheat, it's a different um, texture. It's something that uh, is used a lot for like making pastas. Do not worry about it. Use all purpose flour. And then we're going to need a half a cup of ricotta cheese and a third a cup of Parmesan and one egg. And Stuart is getting everything out for us. Woo! Thank you so much. My mama said I'm cute. As always. Okay, the butter and the sage. Did you see the sage? Yeah. It's in a little container. It should be eye level, eye level. Unless I moved it. Moved it above eye level. What? What? <laughs> then it would have been on top of the fridge because you're tall. Okay, so we do not need the sage and the butter till later. We can. Should I put the butter back? No, 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 the butter's fine out. Um, we can ribbon our sage, but I'm still going to wait till six. That's just like the rule of thumb. What do we're... you need ribbon? We need uh, some kind of string? No. <laughs> ribbon our sage. I mean, we're going to cut it into ribbons. You. Chef terminology. Chef terminology. All right. So if you are just tuning in, you do need a baked potato for this recipe um and we are going to start in about two minutes one minute one minute <laughs> all right i'm excited i wonder if you guys can actually see like if the food cam is um actually like a good vision for you guys if you think that it could be at an angle would help like let us know and we'll try to make it easier for you to uh, understand and follow. Do I look to, like to cook Cajun food? Um, on occasion, I like gumbo and etouffee and things like that. We um, went to a, uh, what was it, a um, Fat Tuesday party before, and she made like the most amazing crawfish. Um, Oh, so good. I don't cook it as much. I've definitely cooked it before. It's not something like my go-to, um, but we do really enjoy it. Yeah. We'll do some crawfish occasionally. We love crawfish. I don't know if that's necessarily Cajun food, though. I mean, we do cook it Louis Louis Louisiana style. Right. How do you say Louisiana? You just did it. Louisiana. <laughs> cool. Go make a tequila sunrise. Stuart loves Tequila Sunrise. Sure do. That is his Sunday morning drink of choice. Or a Bloody Mary. Or a Bloody Mary. Yeah. You haven't been making Bloody Marys lately. Is I it because are not. we out of V8? That is, are we? Most of the time we're out of celery as well. We definitely have celery and we definitely have. Uh, no, oh, but wait. I bought you a Bloody Mary mix from Trader Joe's. Mm, that's right. I've never, we haven't tried their. Uh... Okay, so it is six o'clock. So let's talk about it one more time. Let's introduce ourselves first. Okay, let's introduce <laughs> ourselves one. So this is Cooking for Stu. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Stu. And every Thursday, well, almost every Thursday, we um, do a cookie class. We post the ingredients on Sunday so you can cook along. And tonight we are making pumpkin gnocchi. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you're going to need pumpkin puree. You're going to need about a cup of that. You're going to need a half a cup of ricotta cheese, a third a cup of Parmesan cheese, an egg, which I don't want to crack open, so I'm going to put it right there, and either all-purpose flour or semolina flour, and then you need a cooked potato. 
So we are going to do this on this work surface. So I'm going to put everything back on this cutting board. You want me to bring the potato out? Yes, get the potato out. And I'm going to move this cutting board up. I put it in the freezer because it needs to cool down quick. Okay, so we do want a clean work surface. And you, if you have like a rubber mat that you bake on or um, anything that you want to put, because it's going to get messy. We're going to do everything kind of like you would pasta. You do it on the work surface. You create a well for the egg, and you mix with your hands, and you get a little bit uh, dirty. So make sure you uh, wash your hands. And thank you so much for fun to cook with. We appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to take off all my rings. I, I like have become like a jewelry person, which is horrible for a chef because I, I literally take them off like every 30 minutes because I when I make my um, sourdough bread, I have to coil the bread um, every 45 minutes for five hours. So every 45 minutes, I take off all of my rings. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't wear how many rings? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Nine, which is one of my favorite numbers. Uh, I probably shouldn't wear nine rings. So let me wash my hands real quick. My love, would you like to wash your hands? Because you may get your hands dirty. Yeah. Okay. So my potato is still warm, but it's going to be okay. I can handle it. And let's see. Someone asked, you should move the cooking for stew banner to make it where you can see through it. You can only see what you're doing through the food cam. Oh, okay. Well, I think I can like lower. I can't do it right now, but I we will accomplish that. Because yeah. then you can see this angle. I wonder if we could just, well, no, because then you won't see you our can, heads. Yeah, I'm going to be cut off. Let me just try to move this back. It may not work. Oh, that, does, that doesn't do anything. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> we will we will take note to that. And that's a good suggestion because I do want you guys to see. Because right now you will be wanting to look at the food cam because we are going to be doing it on this work surface. Okay. So go ahead and peel off the skin to your baked potato. It should be easy to peel. You just make it a slice in it and then peel away. Oh, thank you. A trash bowl. I, you know what? I should do this over the bowl. <laughs> it's still warm, but it's going to be okay. I should cut that. <laughs> we need a towel. Okay, so go ahead and peel your baked potato. You got extra spoons if you want to break that. Would that work? You want to do it? I can do that. All right, you finish peeling the potato. I like saying potato. Okay. I wish we could fix that camera thing right now, but I probably can't. Whoop. Well, now you made it. I mean, I made it where you can't see our faces. Okay, it kind of helped. You can kind of see now. Yeah. Okay. So we have one potato. So. You're going to use your ricer or your cheese grater to um, get this potato all fined up. So I'm just going to cut this into a few circles. It was baked all the way through. You were completely right. I was questioning you, and I'm, I'm so sorry that I would ever question you. It happens. And you're going to actually just rice this right onto your work surface. Oh, <laughs> All right, and then use a knife to cut off your potato from your ricer. And voila, that's it for the ricer. This does look like about a cup of potato. And we're only cooking for us two, so this is definitely going to be plenty. And I didn't add a protein or anything tonight because this is a very, um, like, heavy meal. So, and plus I just kind of wanted to just focus on one thing, so... We've got our potato right here, and we are going, hold on one second. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure I was doing this the right way. So you're going to want to spread your potato around into a circle or disc, and then you are going to put your flour and your pumpkin puree on top in whichever order you would like. So I'm going to start with the cup of pumpkin puree.
And I'll probably use the rest of this puree to make like mini pumpkin pies or something. I would love that. Would you? I would. Okay, I'll do that. Anything for you. Okay, so go ahead and take your cup of pumpkin puree and spread it um, kind of evenly, like you're trying to create a disc. Like a pizza. Yeah, like a pizza. A pumpkin puree on top of your flour. Because we are going to end up creating a well in the middle, which we don't need to do right this second, where the egg's going to go. Smells and good already. That's exciting. Yeah. Haven't done much at all. Potato and uh, pumpkin. pumpkin. Just smell good. Just go well together. All right, so we've got a cup of our pumpkin puree over our riced or grated potato. And then we need a cup and a half. It says a cup and a half to three cups of flour. And I think that it says that because of how big your potato is. So start off with a cup and a half. If you think your potato is really small, just use a cup of the flour. This is a cup, so go ahead and pour it in. That's plenty. That's a cup. So we're going to have, go ahead and sprinkle this on top of... I'm actually going to just do the cup. I don't want it to be super floury. I'd rather it be a, like potato gnocchi. So I'm going to stick with the cup. This looks like a lot of flour to me. Um, so go with um, like the look of how much potato you got versus flour. So um, uh, for us, for that three inch potato, I'm going to go with a cup of flour. Okay. And then a half a cup of ricotta cheese. That is a half cup. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to just dunk that guy right there, and then I'll spread it out. So go ahead and spread out your ricotta cheese. Okay. And this is where you're going to want to start creating a well. A little circle in the middle, and that's where we're going to put our egg. So one egg on top of the ricotta. Voila. Now, it does say, I want to add some uh, salt. So go ahead, and uh, I like to do a pinch per person. So I'm going to add two pinches of kosher salt. If you used iodized salt, um, only use a like half the amount because it's much smaller granules, so you're going to have a lot more salt. So I'm going to do uh, two pinches. And this recipe does have like the cheese, uh, Parmesan cheese is salty, and but ricotta and pumpkin don't have any salt in it. So I would definitely season your, um, your mixture here. And then you're going to take your spoon or fork or what have you and start mixing the egg into a circle like a scrambled egg and get your uh, cream cheese kind of in there. You are going to get your hands dirty. I will repeat, your hands are going to get dirty. <laughs> so go ahead and start incorporating it all together. Back and forth. What's that? That looks interesting. Okay. Now, if it's wet, I'll be able to tell, and then I can add more flour, because it, it needs to be like a dough. All right, so now I'm going to get my hands dirty. I mixed it well enough with the spoon that I'm going to uh, press it all together with my hands. And this is pretty wet, so I'm going to need more flour. So go ahead and pour me a half a cup of flour. I'm going to stop mixing, so I'm going to add a half a cup of flour. You can always adjust when you're doing uh, recipes like this. So don't freak out. You just, you don't want it to be like all flour, but you do not want it to be like super wet because we're going to be rolling it and boiling it. Oh, this is a good time. Let's put some water on the stove and get it boiling. So Stuart's got a pot for me. Um, do about halfway, more than that, yeah. He's got a pot for me. He's going to fill it halfway with water, and we're going to get that up to a boil. So go ahead, 
and do that now. If you're cooking alone, you know, stop what you're doing and get the water boiling and then you can finish making your dough. I'm still incorporating this. I think I'm going to need more flour. That's why it said one and a half to three cups because you can add gradually. So it's going to be like more of a like pasta. A, yeah, is, gnocchi is like a pasta. It is pasta? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and pour that for me because my hands are super dirty. That's good. I think. I really don't want it to be too uh, yeah. dirty. Yeah, then it'll get brittle, right? No, it's just when we eat it, it'll be like. Dough. Yeah, I want it to be <laughs> like light and fluffy. Gnocchi is supposed to be this like pillow. Um, so it is supposed to be fluffy. And When, when did you first try this? Oh, when I was young, I tried gnocchi. So that you can make gnocchi a few ways. You can make it with potato um, and flour or ricotta. So this has both. It has both uh, flour and ricotta. So I think it's going to be really good. Okay, so go ahead and form. This looks good to me. This feels good. It's, it's, it's staying together. So go ahead and put it in like a nice um, rectangle, if you will. And you're going to cut it into a uh, Six to eight pieces. I'm going to cut this guy into six pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half. Voila. And then in thirds. Doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to take these pieces and roll them into a log and make the gnocchi shape. So gnocchis literally look like little pillows. So go ahead and take your um, piece of gnocchi and roll it into a log like so and you'll do the next one okay so i'll pay attention yes pay what were you gonna ask uh why pillow shapes that's just the way that they're made so there's two ways you could do it you do it where you um put it on like a pasta roller or a fork and you make like little indentions or you can just have uh plain pieces or you could take your finger and make like a little pillow like a, like a little like your head's there and you could do it either any way you want. So these are very delicate, um, but don't fuss over the um, shape. I really don't think it's that important. And remember, have your water boiling. This is going to make a lot. I don't even know if I'm going to cook all of mine tonight because we're not going to be able to eat all of that. And I think it freshly cooked is better. This could definitely be stored. This dough can be stored in your fridge. If like you, in saran wrap? Or no, just a container. container. Okay, so we got a log there, and what you do is you cut it into little pieces, like that. Oh, okay. Super simple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at first I, I, I was thinking, it's probably not enough, but now that I'm looking, it's quite a bit. Quite a bit. So, and then we're going to boil them, and they'll kind of poof up a little. So if you want to do any kind of shape, to your gnocchi, go ahead and grab me a fork, please. I'll show you guys. There's a few ways you could do it. You could leave it just like this, like a nice little uh, rectangle. You could use a fork and you can roll it on along the fork and create like little oh, okay. um, like waves. What would you call that? Just like fork indentions? I don't yeah. know. I personally, and then, or you could take the back of the fork and that would make it look like a pillow, like that. Like your head's laying there. So there's different ways that you can shape your gnocchi. What, which way would you like? Uh, I kind of like the fork. The fork? Do you want to do uh, it? Yeah, yeah. I so you go like this. Or you can just pick it up. Are we both going to do this? So you want to do the next one right there? Yeah, you do it. I'll do the fork. You do the, the gnocchi. Let's go. All right. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Let's see. After adding the egg and beat it, do you add the cheese? Um, I actually have the, I added the cheese uh, first, but it's totally fine. You can add it now. Go ahead and add your cheese to the mixture. And the Parmesan? When does that come into play? Oh, the Parmesan. Oh, my goodness. I did not add the Parmesan. See, this is what happens when you do live things. Um, okay. You can always throw it back in the mix. I'm going to throw the parmesan. No wonder. Okay. I apologize. Thank you for saying something. Jeez Louise. Okay. I should have said something. No big deal. <laughs> um, my little sous chef, can you please put um, a little less than a half a cup because it's a third a cup? <laughs> Sorry, you guys. 
No big deal. You can add your Parmesan now. And plus, we're waiting for our water to boil. So this is totally fine. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Miss Bridget, did you add the Parmesan cheese that I messed up and forgot? Okay, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. No big deal. Yeah. Good thing we didn't bump out, like, onion or something. Add a little bit more flour. This is pretty wet. You know, we're just going to make it even better. You can add all of it. Okay, I'm going to mix it all. I don't think this dough could get overworked, so I'm not worried about it. No crying in the kitchen. Who's that, Julia Sides? Oh, Julia Sides says, no apologies. Oh, no yeah. explanations. So, I am not sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. You guys are depending on me, and I messed up. Okay. All right. So now we're going to make our ball into a little thing, square again. And Stuart is going to take over from here. I will. Woo. <laughs> Good job, Ben. I will be your sous chef for a minute and clean up. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Our pasta water is already boiling. All right. How are we doing? Doing great. You look like a natural. Thank you. So good. I'm going to need to make you more often. I quit. Stuart's supposed to cook for me on Wednesdays, but um, he hasn't yet. You know, when I, did I make that rule? Like three months ago? And I don't you know, think some, some days I'm, I don't even know the, what day all. it is. No. And, uh, you know, I forget it's Wednesday or today's Thursday. You know, I was like, he does so much for me, though. Like, he makes me my own jewelry and bath caddies and a million cutting boards. And you're just the best. I love you. Thank you. I'm not mad at you. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Those look great. All right. So our gnocchis. Yeah, perfect, babe. Look at you. You are a natural. Yeah. He got the fork action going. Very good. Perfect. This isn't really something that you um, need to stress or worry about too much. Where do I put these? Just leave them here? Just leave them here. Let's do another log. How many do you want uh, to eat? Probably eight, like... Like one of the, like a portion of these? Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so let's do three logs. And we're going to just save the rest and bake them uh, tomorrow. Because I just like things uh, freshly cooked. I guess I'm snooty that way. Tiki? No, this isn't tequila. This is a vodka drink with um, ginger vodka. Which I guess I'm picky. Made. Yeah, I'm holding you made it. I infuse the the vodka with ginger. Yes. All right, how's everyone doing? You guys have little pumpkin pillows yet? Oh, thank you so much for donating. I really, really appreciate it. We uh. Thank you. Yeah, we really hope that more and more people start cooking um, with us, and we just want people to be able to enjoy a meal together with their friends and family, even if they're apart. So um, please, you know, tell your friends and family, and we'll keep coming here on Thursdays and cooking with you guys. Um, and we will think about cooking some Cajun food. That sounds like a plan. Yeah. I don't think I think next week we're going to do a roasted tomato soup with grilled cheese croutons. Um, just because of the fall, and I think I'm going to have a guest appearance next week. We're just trying to figure out functionality um, on the camera. We may be in Halloween costumes. Maybe. We are. Um, we are. Oh, we are going to be in Halloween costumes. So, um, someone is still needing. That's totally fine. Go ahead and get your uh, gnocchi um, all mixed together. Don't forget the Parmesan cheese. If you need to add more flour, 
add more flour. Um, you really just want to make sure that the dough uh, stays together and it's not like falling apart, but you don't want it to be stiff and uh, too uh, floury, doughy. All right. I'm excited. And they boil for about three minutes. Um, once they start floating to the top, they are done. And you probably want to do them in batches. You do not want to overload your pot um, because then they will stick together and you'll just have like a big clump. And we don't want that. We want individual little pillows. So um, I would um, use a slotted spoon to, you know, take them out so you could do batches of them. This is a slotted spoon. Um, if you don't have one of these, I believe a lot of kitchen utensils have the ones with like the two slots. That will work as well. Perfect. All right. So we're going to boil our gnocchi. We have our pot behind us, but we will set up so you can see us cooking the um, gnocchi uh, in front on the food cam. So, one more thing. Before we start cooking, let's talk about the sage really fast. You have a few options. You could leave the sage leaves whole. Some people um, like to just have like big fried sage leaves, so then you just need to leave these um, whole. Or you can ribbon them, which meaning you can slice them into thin strips, so you have the sage perfumed throughout the whole dish. I am actually just going to leave them whole. I like the way it looks better um, now that I'm talking about it. So I'm just going to pick all of these sage leaves off of the stems. And I'm going to leave my sage leaves whole. And they will eventually be fried in butter when we cook this gnocchi. And who doesn't want a buttered fried sage leaf? I mean, delicious. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Either ribbon your sage or prick them off of the container. Off of the uh, six. Okay. So our water is boiling. I'm going to just show you guys. You're just going to plop these guys in. So I'm not going to do all of this. It's a little hot. Do it. Okay. I'm going to do about half. That's okay. And that's good. And we'll put that back on the stove. And they will eventually float to the top, and that is when they are finished. So we're going to remove these right here. So you can set up the little... And what do you want them in after we take them out? Like a bowl? Just put them on a plate, a plate for now. Plate with napkins on it? We don't need to dry them off. You could just um, put them on a plate. Okay. I think if you put them on a napkin, they'll stick. And we don't want them to... Oh, thank you. I hope I do a good job explaining things. Yes, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I want people to feel like they are um, learning something. And, of course, I make mistakes, like forgetting the cheese. Uh, when I work, uh, when I do, like, my own cooking for business, I mean, it's up to me, really, the dish. So um, it's a little bit easier. When I'm doing things and I'm trying to teach, you know, you, you do kind of, it can get a little harder. It's really um, great, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm doing great. No problem. Later, have a drink. Have a sip of my drink. Okay. Perfect. Our gnocchi's getting there. It hasn't quite come to the top, but it will. All right. And then we're just going to get out our little trusty uh, thing. What's it called? Uh, a burner? Burner, yeah. And I'm gonna use a large pan because I want a lot of surface area on the gnocchi. I want them to get crispy. Do you need oil? We are gonna use butter. butter. But you know what, let me use a little bit of oil. So if you are worried about your butter burning, which definitely can happen if you're someone who cooks at a high heat, butter burns quickly, add about a tablespoon of um, oh. olive oil. We're ready. Okay. So they came to a, they came to, they floated. So Stuart's getting out the gnocchi now, and he's just gonna put it on a plate for me because I'm gonna cook them all at the same time. You don't have to cook them in batches um, on your pan. 
You just want to cook them in batches in the boiling water so they don't stick together. And I'm really excited. I think they're going to be delicious. It almost looks like tater tots. <laughs> kind of. Still looks like tater tots, but once we crisp them up a little bit in butter, they'll be really yummy. I mean, they're going to be yummy either way. But we want to get our uh, pan um, hot, like medium, before you add the um, oil and butter. So yeah, I would add a tablespoon of oil, extra virgin olive oil, or just olive oil to the pan with your butter, so it's harder for your butter to burn. We do want the butter, it's nice to have like a brown butter, but butter can burn pretty quickly, and we want to cook these long enough where they get a little bit crispy. But I'm just going to repeat the process yes. without changing the water? No, you do not need to change the water. Do you need help? No, it's okay. And Stuart's going to put the rest of the gnocchi in our second batch. They only take like three minutes to cook. So while those are cooking, um, you could go ahead and get your burner onto medium, medium heat, and have it hot before you um, put your oil and butter in the pan. Handsome. Well, I'll do the rest of them. <laughs> There's only three left. Oh, it might they might stick. Oh, okay, that's fine. They stick. It's your fault. Yep, they're my it's my fault. It's all my fault. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. <laughs> all right. So we got about three minutes. I got my uh, stove at a medium uh, high heat to slowly get warm. How we doing? Stuart's doing great. Yeah, he's the king of the hour. You're always the king, not just the hour. I love you. Star Wars. Yeah. Hey. Uh, this is Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. I got this uh, T-shirt with my dad when we went to see Dead and Company uh, in Dallas with John Mayer. Super fun. That was, what, last year? Mm-hmm. Pre-pandemic. I miss going to concerts. There's so many things I miss. Alrighty. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you're excited for your pumpkin yoki and you're feeling the season. Oh, we do have friends watch, uh, watching from Virginia, and I bet the weather there is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. All right, so my pan is medium heat. I'm going to add a tablespoon of olive oil to the pan. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter. Actually, with this many pieces of gnocchi, I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half. Go ahead, get your butter in there and get it. Nice and melted. Oof. You know why when you go out to restaurants and everything just tastes so good? It's because they use a ton of butter. Oop, no burning myself this week. Yeah, I definitely burnt my finger last week. It's all bruised and it blistered. Oof, pain. It happens, it happens. But I don't want you guys burning yourself. Don't, I mean, copy me, but don't copy me back. Much. Okay, let's see. It's going to be really pretty this weekend. A little bit cool, but definitely fall weather. Yes, I'm very, very excited. I'm jealous. Okay. Um, go ahead and add your sage to your bubbling butter. And it's going to kind of fry a little. Which is super yummy. Fried sage is delicious. Okay. And that's good. And now our gnocchi's Finish perfect timing, Stuart. I'm going to go ahead and add our gnocchi to this sizzling. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, it smells so good. And we're almost done. We're just going to let this um, top. I don't use salted butter, so I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Just uh, about a pinch and a half. 
because I don't need salted butter. If you buy salted butter, then you don't need to add any more. Go ahead and it's gonna if it sticks, don't worry about it. It's still gonna taste delicious. Our stuck a little. I'm gonna get out a uh, spatula and slightly turn these over so I don't burn myself this week. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> well, this thing gets really hot, even on medium heat. Yeah, and all you're looking for right here is to kind of add a little crunch to your gnocchi. You don't want to burn the butter, so do it at a medium heat. And you don't want, um, like, you don't want to burn the gnocchi either. I mean, you'll only get burnt gnocchi if you've got, like, burnt butter. So just get it so it's got a little golden crust to it. And it's going to be delicious. Mm, that was great. It's almost done. It, it happens so fast because the butter. Yeah. Ours um, is breaking up just a little in the pan, um, which means we probably could have added just a dash more flour. But this way we will have very soft, pillowy um, dough. And that's better than it being like little perfect uh, pillows because you know, it's a home cooked meal. It's not like a dish that I'd be serving at a five star restaurant. So this to me looks absolutely perfect. I'm super excited. Do you want to eat it in a bowl? Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and grab two bowls for us. And that's it, you guys. This is a delicious, easy pumpkin uh, gnocchi recipe. I really, really, really hope you guys enjoy it. And next week we're most likely going to be doing a roasted tomato soup recipe. And if you have any suggestions, because I know someone suggested this last week, they said to make pasta, and then we started talking about gnocchi, and then we went to pumpkin, and bam, here we are. And if you guys have any more suggestions, please let me know. If you made this dish, please tag us on Instagram or Facebook. Take a photo. Please tag us. And we just really appreciate you guys watching, and thank you for the donations, and we just really hope you guys enjoy these classes as much as we do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Totally. Okay, let's try it. Let's make a make a bowl. Mm. And then uh, Stephanie and Anthony are also cooking this. Hey week's guys, day. thank you for so much for following along. We really, really appreciate the support. Um, we really hope this gets more popular. Um, please keep telling your friends and family, like, you know, to cook along with you. Um, and we hope you continue to cook with us. Ooh. Fried sage is so good. I'm excited. That's why I wanted to keep the long, like, leaves, because... The crispy sage is just delicious. I got way more than you, babe. I need to give you some more. Are you okay? Oops, I was in your picture, wasn't I? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't lie. <laughs> was I? No, 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 you're good. I can't get this one. This one doesn't want to come. You take the bigger bowl. I'm not going to be able to eat all that. Okay, you guys, let's see. I need to try it. Hey, did anyone, um... Try it yet? Yeah, we're going to try it first. You want a fork? Sure, a fork would be superb. I want this bowl to be smaller. All right. Do you want to watch Stranger Things again tonight? Sure. We can start from episode one. Yeah. I just finished it, but I want to watch it again. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Mm. I like that. I'll eat this entire bowl. <laughs> I like it. I think the texture is really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could use a bit more salt, but I can add that to the top. It's really much better to... Um, not over salt things because you can always add salt when you're cooking for people like me as a private chef i would try it first 
like I did just now. And if I think it needs more seasoning, I would add it before. Because you don't want the customers to have to season stuff. Um, I will offer salt if they need it, but usually um, that never gets asked because I do try everything before I send it out. So um, for me, I would have um, added a little bit more salt, which I did. So I bet it's still good. You liked your drink. You drank it. Did you add any more to it? More. You ended up liking it, huh? <laughs> it Did you good. like it that it got watered down? Uh, maybe. Like, maybe because the it wasn't like as um, pumpkin-y. Right. Like the texture, because it's pumpkin puree, so of course it was like a little... Um, it actually goes well with... It the, goes very well. That's what I looked up. I looked up um, mm. fall uh, recipes and... Mm. See, now it's perfect. Perfect. Mm. All right. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for following. Thank Please tag us so um, on social media. And if you're in Houston, we will be at the Farmer's Market next to Highland Village this Saturday from 2 to 3. And we just hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.